Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to make a mixed media card, but it could be an art journal page, it could be a home decor item, you can choose. So we are going to use two napkins. This adorable nap napkin is called Easter Family, but it doesn't have to be an Easter one strictly. And the poppy one is called Proud Poppy, and you can get them both at ninniesnapkins.com. So in order to play with the composition, I rough cut the elements out from the napkin. I leave the extra plies on, it gives some stability and makes it easier to cut. Now I am going to mount this or put this on a six by six foam core mixed media board from TCW, but you could do it on a card, you could do it on a wood panel, you can even change the size, although if you're changing the size and going bigger, you may have to play with the composition a bit to make it fit. So I talked about the two excess plies, you want to take those off before you glue them down, and that's what you saw me doing there. Now this little Easter bunny family is so cute and adorable, but I want to get rid of some of the excess. And I'm cutting out any elements that I don't want. And it's giving kind of that deckled edge or that rough edge. And when you glue this down onto the background, that helps make it invisible. Most of that white napkin is going to become translucent and disappear, but a deckled edge or the water cut edge will show less than a straight scissor cut edge. There is a affiliate link to ninniesnapkins.com in the description box and a coupon code for your first purchase. So I'm just picking out, taking some of that excess white I like to get fairly close, but if there's a little bit of white around the edges, it's not bad. When the napkin is has a white background, it's a lot more forgiving than a dark one. Dark edges have to be treated somewhat differently. So now I did the same thing with the element from the poppy napkin. And usually when I start the water cut, I keep it pretty much exactly the way that the napkin designer designed it. As I play with the composition, you're going to see me adjust, cut things apart, eliminate parts, and make it my own. Now when I'm water cutting, I'm using a liner brush and just a little bit of water. You don't want too much water because that's just going to soak into the napkin and make the napkin very weak. If that happens, you can dry the napkin before you try to rip out any of the excess. I'm going in the little spaces in the middle of the poppy here. You, you, some, you don't have to do that. You can leave it and it will go translucent, especially if your background is very light. So now that my elements are cut out, I am playing with the composition. This poppy bud is going a little too far, so I'm cutting it back and I can adjust how it looks, where it looks. So I'm just playing with that on the substrate that I've chosen. Now, if you were using like a seven by 10 art journal page, you'd have more room in between and you would have to maybe adjust less or you may want to add a couple different sections of that poppy napkin. So I'm playing with it, switching sides, which side looks better. Now you can see I've already changed where that poppy bud is going to go. I'm still not sure exactly where it is, but you have the original and you have whatever you create with it. So now that the elements for the focal image are done, I'm going to prepare my substrate. Now this is a foam core mixed media board and I'm just giving it a coat of gesso because I know I want to do the technique of removing paint through the stencil. So this primes the, the mixed media board and these are available at TCW and there is an affiliate link for TCW as well below. And I'm painting the edges as well with the gesso. Now I want to keep the background light. I don't want the background to overpower 
my focal images, which I absolutely love. So I'm taking some light blue permanent and then I'm mixing in wet on wet some of this yellow green. It's just taken out of the tube and I have it in the container because my tube was all almost all used up. So I'm just mixing the yellow green with the light blue permanent right on my substrate. And I love the next tones. Then I'm placing this wave stencil from the crafters workshop and removing the paint through the stencil. Now my substrate is six by six, so it's fairly small, so the paint isn't going to dry. If I was doing this on a much larger scale, I would do section by section, removing the paint through the stencil and then applying paint to the next section, removing it and moving, moving along that way. You don't want the paint to dry and you absolutely need to have it gesso beforehand so you can pull up the paint. This is giving some nice light patterning to my background, adding a little bit of interest. It's very light, but I love it. I also love this tealy green against the poppy. That's Those are complementary colors. So there's how it's going to look. But I want to add a little more detail. So I grab my Elegant Script stamped. This is from Darkroom Door. And I th I'm pretty sure that it's available both in Amazon and Ninny's Napkins. And I'm stamping with turquoise acrylic paint. When you use acrylic paint with your stamps, just make sure you wash your stamps right away. You want to get that paint off of the stamps. Now I'm ready to glue down my focal images. But if I glue it right down, because the napkin goes translucent, some of that blue green and the script is going to show through. So I've placed the bunnies over there and I have a rough idea of where they're going to be glued down. And I'm just using some white gesso underneath to knock back the color so it doesn't discolor my focal image. Now here you see me using fluid matte medium to glue it down and I put a coat underneath and then I go over top. And then of course between all layers I am drawing even though a lot of that isn't being shown in the video. Now just a question or just a comment about my Amazon links. I am an Amazon affiliate. If you are in Canada, Germany, Spain, the UK, if you shop through the links, even though they are, if you click on those links, even though they are American, US, they will direct you to your Amazon. So you can still support my channel and use the same links. This is something new, so thank you for your support. So now I'm doing the poppy, and I've cut apart the poppy to glue it down in sections. And I'm just, again, putting the white gesso to knock back that blue-green, because that's not going to make my poppies be bright. So I'm putting this on. I. It's kind of crowding my bunny a little bit here, I notice, and I'm thinking. So I pull apart the poppies, and I'm going to do one part at a time. That just makes it easier. And if I change how it looks compared to what it was on the napkin, that's okay. So here I'm using the matte medium to glue down this poppy. and then I'll add the other one. And because I've changed the composition, I'm going to layer it up so it doesn't overlap my bunny so much. I can snug it in there a little closer to that taller poppy. And then I'm adding the bud right here. So if you compare that to the original napkin, it looks slightly different, but it's fine. Now I want to add a little bit of color, boost up the color of the poppies. So I am using 
through a couple colors of paint and I'm looking at the color and I'm matching it to my acrylic paints. And here I am using, a liz not alizarin crimson, cadmium red, burnt sienna, and then I'm adding some Naples yellow, which is in that poppy. And I'm mixing those right on the poppy. Then I decide I'm going to splatter with red, just to introduce red a little bit into the background. I just thin the paint to splatter, and then I have some gold paint in the container for splattering, and then I'm splattering with gold, mostly on the poppies. I do spend some time shading with black acrylic paint on the poppy, but that footage was lost. But you really don't have to, especially if you've whited out the background underneath. Now I'm edging with black paint. I've, I've edged with turquoise, but I really want the contrast of the black. I just think that looks better. But you can just use turquoise or a dark blue if that's what you prefer, or it could be red if that's what you prefer. So now I want to add a sentiment. Remember those plies of the excess napkin that we had? We're going to take that and we are going to stamp our sentiment with these little wooden letters and archival ink right on the excess napkin. And I'm going to put the saying, Poppy Easter. When I, after I'm done stamping and it's dry, I'm going to use my liner brush and I'm going to just water cut around the word and get it ready so I can just glue it down. So there's the word poppy that I've stamped on the napkin, the white part of the napkin, and there's Easter, and I can rearrange it and get it exactly where I want the words to be. And you'll notice I didn't try to make this perfectly level. It's not the way I roll. And then I'm going to use the fluid mat medium and put it under and over. The white part of the napkin goes translucent, especially on a light background like this. You could stamp on tissue paper, but I find the napkin goes more translucent than tissue paper. And then you want to make sure that that's dry. So as I said, you can make this as a card, you can make this as an art journal page or a canvas. This is a mixed media board. I've given it a coat of varnish. And these work really well on these plate display racks. There's this one that I got at Dollar Tree. And this one is a little bit fancier. And I know they were available at Amazon and I will link to it if I can find the link. I hope you enjoyed this, and I wish everybody a very poppy Easter.